In this video, we're going to talk about the what's known as the test for divergence. In previous videos, we talked about why a how to, how one tests whether a geometric series is convergent or divergent, and it all comes down to the constant ratio. If the constant ratio is small, the geometric series is convergent. If the constant ratio is big, then the geometric series is divergent. For other sequences, their series won't be as easy to determine. Um, but it turns out there's going to be one very nice test that one could use here. It turns out that if a series is convergent, so you take the sum where n equals 1 to infinity of the sequence a sub n, if the series is convergent, then it means that the sequence converges to 0. Now, one common mistake that students make here is that we have sequences in play and we have series, right? The series is the infinite sum of a sequence. The sequence could be convergent or divergent. Uh, the series could be convergent or divergent. The two are related, but they're not the same thing. What this theorem is telling us is that if the series converges, what it converges to, we don't know, but if the series converges, the infinite sum converges, then we know that the sequence must have converged and it must converge necessarily to zero. So let's take a look at why that is. So just an argument here. The proof is not that complicated, it turns out. Um, if we take the sequence of partial sums, S sub n. So this is going to be the sum where k ranges from 1 to n, and we add together the sequence A sub k. So you take the, you take the sequence of partial sums here. Then um, notice that if we, look at, if we look at Sn minus Sn minus 1, this is just going to look like A1 plus A2 up to An. And then if you subtract from that Sn minus 1, which is going to look like a, uh, sorry, this is going to look like a1 plus a2. And this will go all the way up until you get to a n minus 1. When you add or when you subtract these things, the a1s will cancel, the a2s will cancel, all the way up to the a n's will cancel. And the only one who doesn't cancel will be a n. So Sn minus Sn minus 1, this is just equal to the term a n. That's an important observation to notice here. And so now by assumption, we, we're assuming that the series is convergent. And since it's convergent, we get that the limit as n approaches infinity of Sn, this equals something, we're gonna call it S as well. So this limit exists. So the limit exists, that's the important part, and it's equal to, it's equal to S right here. Well, in that case, then consider the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n. We'll like we observed earlier, a sub n is just equal to sn minus sn minus 1, as n goes to infinity right here. And if we break these things up, because sn is a convergent sequence, we're going to get the limit of sn minus the limit of sn minus 1, as n goes to infinity. Now, as the sequence sn is convergent, it converges to the number s that we saw before. But this sequence right here, this is the sequence that's just one step behind this one. As n goes to infinity, that difference of one step won't make any bit of a difference as well. If Sn is going to go to S, then Sn minus 1 will likewise go to S. And so you end up with S minus S, which is equal to 0. And this then verifies the statement we were looking for here, that if the series is convergent, then the sequence must also be convergent and it must converge to 0, the sequence. Um, if we take the logical contrapositive of that statement, we get the very following useful observation. If a limit does not converge to zero, then this associated series must be divergent. Now, we're not saying that the sequence is divergent. We're just saying if the sequence doesn't converge to zero, then the previous theorem guarantees that the series would be divergent. Because if the series was, dot, was convergent, then the limit would have to go to zero and we would get a contradiction in that situation. This is commonly referred to as the test for divergence. Uh, we can tell whether a series is divergent if the sequence doesn't go to zero. And so let's illustrate this with an example. Let's show that the series, n equals 1 to infinity of n squared over 5n squared plus 4. Let's show that this thing diverges. So consider the sequence for, for the moment, not the sum, the sequence, the things that we're adding together right here. Take the sequence of n squared over 5n squared plus 4. 
Now, if you take the limit as n goes to infinity, since this is a balanced rational function, you see n squared on top and bottom, you're gonna end up with one fifth as the limit here. But one fifth is not zero, right? This sequence does not converge to zero. And so what this tells us is that the series, so notice the series, n equals one to infinity of n squared over five n squared plus four, this series is divergent. This is divergent by our so-called divergence test, which we talked about on the previous slide. So one thing you're gonna see here is as we are showing that series are convergent or divergent, it's not just good enough to say whether the series is convergent or divergent, we have to also describe why. There's gonna be these convergence tests that tell us whether it converges or not. And so by the divergence test, we see that this series diverges because the limit doesn't, the limit of the sequence doesn't go to zero. And sort of the idea of this is the following. Um, if we have the X and Y axes here, so the X axis, the y axis, what we're seeing is if we take the line, the line of one fifth, y equals one fifth, let's say it's, it's right here. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so we can see this. So this is the line y equals one fifth, one fifth. So based upon our sequence we saw before that as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Our sequence starts off when n equals one, you're gonna get one over nine, which is smaller than one fifth. So you get like a point right here. Then the next one you're gonna get, when n equals two, you're gonna get four over, well, let's figure out this one here. You're gonna get four times five, which is 20 plus four. So you get four over 24, which equals to one sixth. That's still less than one fifth, but you're getting a little bit closer, right? And this is what you're gonna see closer and closer that as this, as n gets bigger, 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 this number is gonna get closer and closer to one fifth. And so after a while, you won't be able to tell the difference between the sequence, a sub n, is this equal to one fifth? It'll be so hard to tell because they'll be so close to each other. But think about the infinite sum here. What we're basically getting is we're gonna be getting an infinite sum that looks like something plus something plus something that's approximately one fifth plus like something that's approximately one fifth plus something that's approximately one fifth, fifth et cetera, right? You're gonna be getting things that look like an infinite sum of, of one fifths, and so that's gonna to diverge towards infinity. And that's the basic idea behind the divergence test right here. If the sequence is not getting smaller, right? If you're not getting closer and closer and closer to zero, that means the terms in the sequence are not, uh, they're not shrinking, and so the infinite sum is gonna explode. It, it cannot converge. The series cannot converge unless the terms in the sequence get smaller and smaller and smaller. So the sequence needs to get small, it needs to, it needs to converge towards zero. But be warned, the converse of the divergence test is in fact false. That is, there do exist sequences, there do exist sequences which converge to zero, but the associated series diverges. So as an example of this, consider the so-called harmonic series. The harmonic series. This is the series where you take the sum, where n equals one to infinity, you take one over n. This harmonic series is, it diverges towards infinity. This, this infinite sum turns out to be infinity, but if you look at the sequence one over n, it actually converges towards zero. So if the sequence converges to zero, that does not mean that the series is convergent. Um, but if the sequence does, uh, con if, it, if it doesn't converge to zero, we can imply, we, we can infer from that the series will be divergent there. So one thing to be aware of with the divergence test is that the di divergence test can only show divergence. The divergence test can never be used to show that a series is convergent. That's a very important distinction. As we learn about more convergence tests in the future, we might need them to show convergence, but the divergence test is a very nice quick test to show when a series is divergent. Now, if you're wondering how do we know that the harmonic series is divergent, that's an argument we could make right now, but in, in lieu of the, uh, the integral test, which we'll talk about in the not too distant future, we can actually very quickly show that the harmonic series is divergent there. And so we will actually postpone that conversation until we talk about the integral test in a future lecture.